Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. sound and name. King Alexander of Sylvania. Real live king, huh? No wonder they had so many folks over there fixing and cleaning. Yeah, Miss Drysdale even hired us. To do what? Stay away. Take <laughs> that back to her and... Hey, no, wait a minute, Uncle Jed. We can make a lot of money if you'll just play along. What you mean? Well, she said she'd double this. If uh, we could keep you and Granny out of sight, too. <laughs> Good morning. Get someone to sit in for you. I want you to drive me to the Yacht Harbor. I'm meeting Margaret down there to pick up King Alexander. How exciting! And you look so handsome. Uh, what is that medallion you're wearing? Oh, that's Margaret's idea. She thought when I met the king, I should be wearing a decoration. It's very impressive. Where did she get it? From my den. It's an ashtray. <laughs> Watch it, Miss Hathaway. I'm up to here with this nobility business. I haven't even met the royal jerk yet. Gee, what about Ellie May? Your wife says King Alexander is one of the world's most eligible bachelors. Worldly, handsome, witty, charming. Look, those things don't count when we're talking about a lifetime companion for my sweet little Ellie. Well, naturally, he'd need other important qualities to make him a good husband. Right, and he doesn't have them. No? Not a nickel. <laughs> That's not what I meant. But why do you say that? Because I've checked every financial rating book here, and he isn't even listed. Well, he probably has a secret Swiss bank account. Alexander is the last of the big-time monarchs, always at one resort or another, on a yacht somewhere. Really? Yes, I I've read that he's worth billions. Billions? Well, well, maybe he's a man of good character after all. <laughs> good character or good credit? There's a difference. <laughs> Wait, what if the king and Ellie Mae were to fall in love and there was a merger? I believe you mean marriage. Yes, we've got to introduce them right away. But, but Chief, it will take time to teach Ellie enough protocol even to meet the king. Sir Milvin Drysdale, banker to the Royal Majesties. Oh, with the king's billions and the Clampus billions in my bank, I can wheel and deal with the big money boys, the Rockefellers, Baron Rothschild, Bing Crosby. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale? Hello, Mr. Clampett. Howdy, Miss Jane. I'm sorry to bother you, buddy. It's about that king that's coming to visit you. Not me, you. <laughs> me? And your family. I told him all about the Clampets, and he wants to meet you right away. She. Well, doggy. Think of that. Bunch of old sorghum lappers like us rubbing elbows with a real live king. <laughs> oh, she. Something wrong, Miss Jane? Oh, uh, she's just a little upset because we had planned to surprise you with him. Oh, well, I reckon that explains the money. Money? Yeah, your missus wanted to pay the youngins to stay away from your house whilst the king was there. I reckon she didn't want them to find out about the surprise. <laughs> of course. And Big Mouth Milburn put his foot in it. <laughs> Both feet, and it's too late to pull them out. Well, we'll have to be leaving to pick up the king. Now, you go home, and I'll have his highness there in about an hour, and have Ellie in her nicest dress. Oh, we'll be ready. I see you're all slicked up to meet him. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, it's mighty handsome. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know when I've seen a prettier ashtray. <laughs> oh, uh, don't let his highness put on the feed bag before he comes to the house. Granny has always said that her hog jowls is fit for a king, and now she can prove it. <laughs> King Alexander of Sabalia. Put the call in here. It's for you, Alex. <laughs> yes? Oh, thank you. My new host, Mr. and Mrs. Brysdale, just Robin. Alex, why don't you stop being an international freeloader? If you'd settle down and apply yourself, you could be a first-class busboy. <laughs> I am a king, not a steward. I was supposed to be a guest on your yacht. For the first two years, you were a guest. <laughs> then on, you pay for your passage. I offered to pay. I have billions in my Swiss bank account. You have billions of Sabalian glottonies. The currency of my country. Why, this paper napkin is worth more than a glottony. Wait a minute. It is a glottony. <laughs> I run short of napkins. <laughs> Oh, it's the birthday I was just here. Uh, uh, please go. Huh? Oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, can I uh, borrow your coat? <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, thank you. I shall remember your kindness when my people return me to the throne of Sabelia. Oh, stop thank dreaming, you. Alex. You're down to sponging off of bourgeois Beverly Hills bankers. Yes, but they will know bourgeois Beverly Hills heiresses. <laughs> I will marry one, and then presto. The Glodney will again be worth something. Well, they're worth something already. They make uh, fabulous napkins. <laughs> Your Majesty! Sir, Mrs. Drysdale? You may rise. Help me, help me. <laughs> we are very honored to have you stay with us at our home, Your Money. Your Majesty? <laughs> yes, Your Grace. We feel a great kinship to the aristocracy. I have very pure bloodlines. And of course, Milburn is no stranger to nobility. Oh, thank you. That's very thoughtful. <laughs> uh, with, uh, we pro with your permission, we will proceed home now, Your Highness. Oh, <laughs> help me, help me. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> Miss Hathaway will have to drive me home. You bring His Highness in the limousine. Of course, my dear. <laughs> Excuse me, Your Highness. Speaking man to king, I've heard you're worth billions. Is that true? Quite true. Oh, really? Well, I know a family you must meet. Mm, if you like. Oh. <laughs> uh, shall we? <laughs> His Highness will be here any minute now. Where's the young'un? You ready for him? Now, don't go getting excited. <laughs> what do you mean, am I ready for him? Well, I mean like special vittles and such. It ain't every day we get to swap howdies with a king. His Highness is gonna get my ordinary company vittles, just like anybody else. Being a king don't make him no different than you or me. All right, Grandma. You ain't gonna catch me carrying on about him. He's just folks, as far as I'm concerned. I ain't gonna get excited or, or flustered or, or discombobulated. All right, Granny, but I don't think you'd be making too much fuss over him if you was to put on some shoes. <laughs> Take it easy. I am. I just don't know what happened to him. I had him on just before I put my corn phone in the oven. Granny, there is your corn phone. Oh. <laughs> but you said you wasn't excited about the king coming. I ain't. All right, you ain't. Now come on, so we can be out front when he comes. All right. I'll take you to my home in a moment, Your Majesty, but first you must meet the Clampets. It's a nice little place. Uh, is there a uh, Miss Clampett? Yes, and I think you'll find her most unique. Not what you'd expect from the daughter of a multimillionaire. Bertie? Is that in... Uh... 
Dollars, uh, drachmas, uh, rubies, uh, what? Dollars. <laughs> now, they're just one of my smaller accounts at the bank, 70 million or so. 70 million? Of course, that's nothing compared to your assets. Fortunately. <laughs> I beg pardon? Uh, fortunately, I have learned the common touch. I am looking forward to meeting Miss Pampet. Oh, her name is Ellie. Just for Candy's company from home. It ain't the same. Jetro says that kings wear gold crowns and fur trim cakes and... Come in, come in. <laughs> come in, Your Highness. I, uh, I seem to have lost my money clip. You see, he ain't nothing to get a whole boggled over. You can say that again. I look outside. <laughs> May I present his most royal, august highness, King Alexander of Sibelia. Howdy, I'm Jed Clampett. Oh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Clampett? Oh, no, we ain't married. Oh, but then you must be the, the beautiful lady I've heard so much about. <laughs> Miss Clampett? Ellie, what an exquisite creature you are. <laughs> Silver-haired beauty. <laughs> Ellie. <laughs> Granny, he thinks you're Ellie. Say something. Oh. In good hey. time, Jed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I ain't Ellie. <laughs> this year's Granny Yonder's Ellie May. Beauty begets beauty. The sun has given her light to the moon. This here is the King of Sibelia, Ellie. Well, hi, the King. Okay. Call me Bobo, all my friends do. Okay, King Bobo. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? Where's the king? Where is his highness? What'd you do with him? That's my nephew, Jethro. He got that outfit from a movie studio, special for you. He looks positively ludicrous. Well, thank you. He'd be pleased. No, I couldn't find your money clip. But he did. I missed him. He's gone, and all that's left is his royal napkin holder. <laughs> you big dog, this here is his highness. Uh, him? Gee, you sure don't look like the king in my big blue book of fairy tales. <laughs> anyway, uh, my liege. <laughs> well, let's all go in the parlor and get acquainted. Hello, Miss Hathaway. Chief, where have you been? Your wife has been phoning every five minutes since I took her home. She thinks you kidnapped King Alexander. For once, she's right. And he couldn't have cared less about protocol when he saw Ellie Mae. I hope there's no language problem. What do you mean? Those two can speak in a universal language. You mean love. Money. Money. <laughs> Milburn? Quick, lock the door. Hello, Uncle Milby. Doreen, what are you doing in town? The question to be answered is what have you done with His Highness? I asked first, what is she doing here? She's my niece, and I asked her to fly here and be King Alexander's companion during his visit. Companion? What about getting married? <laughs> you are already married. No. She and da, da da no more. Poor little thing. She rushed into it before she was ready. But I'm not bitter. Maybe my next husband will be Mr. Wright. Seven's my lucky number. <laughs> Leonard was number seven, dear. <laughs> now, what have you done with Alexander? I think he's visiting friends. I don't know what you're up to, Milburn. Probably something to do with his money. But Doreen is not going to let you out of her sight until she meets the king. Right, Auntie Meg. I've never married royalty before. Uh, unless you count the pancake king. <laughs> Stay right here, dear. I'm going to see if his highness is in the basement. <laughs> Doreen. Why don't you fix your makeup in there? You want to look your best when you meet the king. Oh, I sure do. How's this for openers? <laughs> you always were a shy little thing. <laughs> My God, Duke, she'll wreck everything. Hi, Mr. Drysdale, Miss Jane. We done invited King Alexander. Shh. We done invited King Alexander to stay over with us for a while. And I got to get you to tell me where to pick up his suitcases. Wonderful. Thank you. Oh. There. I know who you are. You do? I'm looking for you. Well, you have? She, she thinks he's king. <laughs> My name's Doreen. Can I be one of your friends and call you Bobo? Chucks, you can call me Gatorface if you want to. <laughs> Bobo's okay. Why don't we get out of here and go for a ride? 
All right. I see you're dressed for it. You bet. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Ain't nothing that turns a girl's head like a uniform. <laughs> serve him and Ellie a court and dinner. I'm having groundhog goulash. Granny, and, uh, I'll try and hold up one of Vittles of mine. He just went down to the seaman pond to talk to Ellie, and I never seen anybody in such a dither. Well, after all, he's the first king Ellie ever met. Well, it ain't her that's in a dither, it's him. <laughs> Let me look. Hold on now. I don't want to go spying on him. Then you wait here. I will. <laughs> you tend your Vittles. Oh, all right, Jed. It's just that I'm so dead blatant excited. I know what you mean. Thinking about Ellie getting married to a king. I can't. It's enough to think of Ellie getting married at all. I got to admit, it looks pretty good, though. Him accepting our invite to stay over and sending the Jethro out for his bags, you know. And we know he ain't no fortune hunter. Mr. Drysdale says he's a billionaire. <laughs> I think I'll just slip out and give Ellie some advice on romance. Granny, <laughs> love will find a way. It don't need you riding point. <laughs> Ah, oh, Elie May. Look at these hands. These little hands. That is kind of small. For a man. <laughs> Elie May, you are driving me mad. I am? Believe me, you are. <laughs> My sweet. My angel. Ah, oh, Elie May. Hi. Why? Why are you always kissing hands? Ain't you never hear the kissing on the lips? <sighs> Ellie. Sorry, I hope I didn't hurt you. Why did you do that? Well, because Granny said to when it's the first date, and it ain't a good night kiss. <laughs> then it was not your idea. Heck no, I liked you. <laughs> And disobey Granny. Then you, your hands will do nicely. <laughs> Would you mind switching? This one's getting awfully chapped. <laughs> well, here we are. This is Drysdale Place. I thought you owned all sorts of fabulous sports cars. Oh, no, just this one. <laughs> Thanks for the ride. Yeah, now I'll pick you up right here for our day tonight. But I thought you were staying here, too. Oh, heck no. Already live next door. Oh, that's a break. <laughs> uh, uh, what are we going to be doing tonight? Oh, I got some real big plans. <laughs> We's gonna go frog hunting. <laughs> frog hunting? Uh, but you're the king. Yeah, uh, I am pretty good at it. <laughs> sure aren't what I expected. This truck and frog hunting tonight. And as for your famous wit, I've only seen half of it. <laughs> Thank you. I ain't even warmed up yet. Well, till tonight. <laughs> Yeah, and wear some old shoes. Thank you. Never seen the light, Jen. Best court and dinner I ever served up. And that king never touched a bite. How can any man pass up groundhog, goulash, baked buzzard eggs, and minced crawdads? Well, maybe he just don't like rich food. <laughs> Beginning to wonder about him. How can you trust a fella that don't like fricassee of barn owl? I wouldn't fault the king, Granny. The way he tells it, all civilians has tetchy stomachs. What you mean? Well, uh, he says nobody in his country eats very good. He's all suffering from something called, uh, inflated gluttony. <laughs> oh, thank you, Your Majesty. I heard you were saying, so I dropped by with your luggage. I'm sorry that uh, there is so much of it. Ah. I'm uh, carrying uh, several suitcases full of currency. Oh, really? Oh, oh, of course, with your kind of money, I suppose a suitcase full here and there doesn't amount to much. Huh? With my kind of money, you are absolutely right. <laughs> so if you're staying here, 
Why don't you let me keep it for you at my bank? Very well. Why don't you open an account for me with, uh, with the money in this too, huh? <laughs> Wonderful. And do you want me to contact your Swiss bank for the balance? Well, perhaps uh, after Ellie and I are married. You're getting married? I am mad about her. Unfortunately, her enthusiasm for the idea does not uh, equal mine. Well, just how much enthusiasm does she have? Roughly speaking, none. <laughs> well, she can't refuse you. You're the king of Sibelia. I know. But uh, to use her exact words, she said, uh, that don't cut no mustard with me. <laughs> well, pardon me, Your Highness. Maybe it's because you're not acting enough like a king. What? Well, I mean, don't you have a uniform you can impress her with, a crown or a cape or something like that? Of course, but, uh, but do you think that would make much uh, difference? Oh, howdy, my lady. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, somebody left these suitcases on the front porch. They belong to His Highness. Thank you, Jethro. Well, thank you. That niece of yours sure took a shine to me. I don't know what done it. Either my uniform or my personal poison magnetism. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it would help to wear my uh, cape and crown. <laughs> Here we are, Miss Hathaway. King Alexander's first deposit. In cash? There must be $100,000 in each of these. And he's got three billion more. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What? What's this stuff? It's a billion currency. King Alexander's a billionaire, all right, in gluttony. Well, it must be convertible to dollars. Look it up in the exchange rate. I am. Let, 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 let's see. Frank Skilders Gluttonies, yes. They're worth four to the dollar. Well, that's still almost one billion dollars. No, Chief, the rate is four tons of gluttonies to the dollar. <laughs> Wait, there's a footnote. This rate is good only during world paper shortages. The rest of the time, they're absolutely worthless. <laughs> Chief. <laughs> Oh, don't take it so hard. You're not out anything. I may be out the clambits. That royal thief is up there right now sweeping Ellie off her feet, and I told him how. That's the gluttony. Maybe we're not too late. Ellie May, I am a king. I offer you a life of complete luxury. Never again will you wear blue jeans. You will always be at the height of fashion. Only the nobility will speak to you. They will call you Your Majesty. Silence. Servants will wait on you hand and foot. You will drink vintage wine and eat gourmet food. You will do no work. You will sleep till noon every day. You will lack for nothing. Now say you accept. I'm sorry, King, but it sounds just awful. You are refusing me? Yes, Your Majesty. But I ain't. What? I was listening to the whole thing. And boy, that's a lot for me. <laughs> oh, hi, Doreen. There is the king. He's the one that took me for the ride. He took you for a ride, all right. That's Jethro. <laughs> There's the real king. Your Majesty. Uh, Doreen, I gotta break our day tonight. I'm going to Sabaya to live a life of luxury. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm, I'm afraid I must say goodbye. The yacht I came in is uh, sailing in two hours. I don't. I'll get packed. But you can't leave. You haven't gotten to know Doreen yet. Oh, forget it, Aunt Meg. I am going back to Boston. Jethro was bad enough, but this one looks like something out of the big blue book of fairy tales. <laughs> Doreen! Oh, forgive her, Your Majesty. She's really lovely and single. Is she by any chance rich? Well, she's gotten seven divorce settlements. Uh, wait, mademoiselle, wait. I will make you my queen. Well, this is the last of the court and dinner leftovers. Ellie, I hope you don't feel too bad about the king leaving and chasing back to Boston. Well, I had no. I never did love him. And when he put on that crown and got so uppity, well, I didn't even like him. Least ways he said we could have his suitcases. I can hardly wait to see what's in them. I already looked. And every one was filled with nothing but paper napkins. <laughs> but they're nice ones. Well, tuck them in and let's eat. <laughs> Now 
it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.